Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome to part two of my song adventure for producing the first batch of workbench kits. Uh, if you missed the first part, we cut up a few logs into kits and uh, or we started to and we're going to continue on with the next two logs and pick up some more and possibly hopefully get those ones sawn as well. It is uh, quite the process. So this is the first one we're going to be cutting today. It's going to be a little bit um, interesting because it does have these uh, limbs and crotches here which are not super desirable for the, uh, the workbenches. So we probably won't really yield a workbench out of uh, this half of the log. If I can get three out of this guy, I'll be happy. Uh, otherwise, we'll probably just get one bench top and then we'll have a bunch of material for workbench bases, which is uh, fine as well. Another kind of smaller issue with this log is it tapers like a lot. So it's a little too narrow down here really, but it's plenty wide down on this end. So that might be kind of interesting to deal with as well, but regardless, this needs to get leveled out as well. The second log I have here is uh, not super great. It's, uh, hopefully I can get two, or th uh, hopefully three, and maybe might only get one bench top out of here. So we have this whole top section, which is like a rotted hole that runs the entire length of the tree. Um, so I'm hoping I can get one, two, and then three bench tops out of this guy. Otherwise, again, we'll be cutting some base material out of it. So that on this end is another kind of view of what this is uh, kind of doing. This would make some cool, I guess, epoxy type of things, but this is gonna be workbenches today. <laughs> so both these logs are kind of iffy as far as yield goes. So I'm just gonna get to work, get them cut up. It's gonna be exactly the same process as before. We'll make a uh, couple of cuts, then remove the top half, cut the, uh, the main meat slab out of there, and that'll produce hopefully two nested uh, workbench tops and then we'll have the bottom half of the log to deal with as well. So I'm just going to get the sawing and unless something crazy happens I will see you on the other side. All right, so on this one, I'm gonna set up to basically chop off this top half of the log, which has all this uh, decay and uh, rot missing here. So I'm gonna come in right around here, which should still leave me with my two quarter sawn pieces. That should be okay. We will see. This bottom side might be kind of iffy towards the uh, outside corners. And we'll kind of go from there. You can see this is, uh, this void is the entire length of the tree. This is the top of the tree. So this is the beginning of a crotch for this tree. So what probably happened with this guy is, you know, that's the base. So as it's coming up here, we have one healthy limb or one healthy side that was alive. This side probably died off at some point. 
and all that rot found its way down. That's my guess at least. And it could also have been just damaged because if you look at the way the tree is trying to heal itself, you know, it, it could have gotten struck by something which killed everything up above it. So, I don't know, it's like a half dead tree <laughs> at one point. So we'll see what we can get out of this thing. This doesn't look super promising. <laughs> there is uh, a lot of rot here and it goes in pretty deep. So even this, this middle area doesn't really matter, but like out here, this is in like the area you'd want. That's not super great. There is maybe oop, an okay section right here and that's rotten again over there. So this one's not looking super great. <laughs> what I'll do, I'm just gonna keep I'll proceed in the same cutting manner. So because it's moved, I'll roll it over. I'll make the uh, bottom cut, I'll make the quarter cut, and that'll leave us with the six inch piece that would normally become the first two pairs or the first pair of bench tops. Um, I'll, we'll see how the reverse side is. If it's really bad or if it looks kind of like this, I'll just set this aside and maybe we'll get one <laughs> bench top out of this. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see. That's the, always the mystery of cutting into a log. You never know what you're gonna find. Well, I think that shows just how deep that, uh, that rod is. Because uh, apparently those side stops were just getting dug right in there. So, uh, yes, yeah, I guess let's throw this thing back up there and see what happens.
So that's how it goes, I guess. This is uh, log number three, or the third log that I saw, and this is the third bench top from it. The fourth one's not gonna happen, so number three, log three produced three tops. Log four, officially nothing. <laughs> that's how this goes. And, you know, just for fun, let's get some, uh, let's get some water going so people can see what their future benches are gonna look like. There's a very good chance that the person who bought these slabs or will end up with these slabs is watching this video. <laughs> okay, so the first one here is probably the, uh, the nicest looking quarter sawn one. Tons of straight grain. This is like a perfect slab as far as I'm concerned with the production of benchtop slabs. It doesn't get much better than that. This one, also not too bad, it's got one uh, not there, so one little defect visually. Um, this is still going to get trimmed back further. There's still some live edge material down there, but I'm kind of leaving things conservatively wide, so some of this uh, spall thing and stuff will be removed if this gets totally uh, cleaned up. And this guy here has got this bar conclusion in it, which uh, would make this a, uh, a B grade slab, so this one would be intended for this to be towards the floor and have the other face be the show side. But that all depends again on how it, how it dries. If it dries this well, it might not be a big deal, but otherwise it'll be a B-grade slab. So three more <laughs> actual slabs to go on the stack. And uh, I got a lot of this stuff now, lying around now. So because I don't have any more log surprises yet, I still have to go pick them up. I think what I'll do, I have all of these quarters still remaining, so in order to like make some room, I think what I'll do is just grab a bunch of them, throw them on the saw, and then we'll just cut them into boards so that they're a little more organized. So we got a nice uh, pile of boards here. I'm gonna get these stacked, and I think next we're gonna go visit my buddy Matt and see what, uh, what he's got for logs for me for uh, making workbenches. So Matt has this one log here that uh, I can make work. It's not ideal because it is a crotch log. Ideal this would be like a straight uh, main trunk without any limbs or anything, but this is a straight up crotch log. <laughs> so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes. It's also like a bit too big for this. So that should make uh, material handling that much more fun. Okay, so with that uh, first log onto the trailer, the only other uh, silver maple log that Matt has here in his pile is uh, a little buried, so he's going to dig it out for me and I'll take a look at it. This isn't really the best time of year for this kind of thing. His supply of these bigger logs is pretty limited, so uh, 
hopefully that second line will work out to be something usable. This uh, definitely is not ideal for workbenches. This is uh, too big. <laughs> the other ones were too small. So uh, this is gonna get whittled down quite a bit into hopefully four bench tops. The only kind of negative thing about this is it has a crotch in it. This is the only time you ever hear me say that I'm just disappointed there's a crotch, but this is all I can get at this time. I need to make some more benches. So this is going to be cut up into workbenches <laughs> and not slabs but it should make some pretty darn awesome workbenches and give us a little bit of extra width so down here you can see we've got a little bit of a rot pocket thing going on here and we've got this larger section up here now very similarly to the other ones i've already cut those ones all had crotch sections you know above the saw logs so essentially they, you know they were cut right there um this one if you take a look at it for a eight foot bench top from the butt where it gets cut right here see right about there that's eight feet so I think what I'm gonna have to do to make this a little bit easier and since it's more accessible right now I'm just gonna go ahead and start trimming this thing down right now while it's on the trailer and we'll see how that goes I need to get this thing off the trailer so I can go back to the, uh, the other house and pick up the skid steer so I can actually do this <laughs> so I'm gonna grab the chainsaw and see how far I can get the other thing uh, is all my chainsaw stuff is at the other house right now. So I might not get as much trimming done as I wanted to before having to pull this thing off the trailer, but we'll see. So with that section trimmed off of there, basically I'm cutting like the main section of the tree into the workbenches. So the one there, here, here, and here. This side down here is like 34. So it's a little bit on the narrow side, but I have a little meat over here to kind of play with. I'm thinking we'll have three good ones and then one's gonna have some crazy crotch figure in it, which if no one wants, I know a guy who would probably like a crotch uh, wood bench top. Down here, this butt end, it is about 44 so this log is definitely oversized for this kind of thing especially with that crotch in there not super ideal but it's what it's going to be and then uh, my buddy george Vandriska is going to be here today he's taking some pictures for a book that he's writing so he'll be here with his camera taking some pictures and uh helping out when needed i guess so it should be a fun day it's a big log <laughs>
So this thing is still uh, incredibly big and heavy. So with it standing vertical like this, I'm just gonna come in and make a wasting cut and just remove a bunch of this material, make it a lot lighter. The actual bench top is somewhere down in here, but we'll come through here with the blade and take this whole top part off of here. I'll make it a little more maneuverable so then we can actually get the bench top we want out of this section. So again, big thank you to George for the help breaking down that big log. So we got this beautiful giant wide bench top out of there. And then we have this one slab, which I still have to cut up into uh, the pair of bench tops. Uh, and then I also got this big trunk on the ground there that I still have to cut up too. What's uh, kind of cool about this big log, even though it's so much bigger than it needs to be, is that the quarters, well at least one, this one quarter, is still big enough to give another bench top. So there is a bench top in here, diagonally here, so that'll get cut out of that one. So that'll be kind of nice. At this point though, I think to kind of round things up for this video, uh, we're doing a little bit of cleanup work, <laughs> I think. So I have all the quarters and chunks over here from the other logs that I already cut. And you can see I already cut up a few of them into boards and stuff. So I got those to cut up and I have this piece that I kicked off because it was a little too uh, punky for bench tops. So we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup cutting. So first off, this big chunk right here, I'm gonna throw this thing on the saw and probably cut it into three individual slabs. So something a little odd about this one, I'm not sure if it was how it was cut before or if it uh, warped or something that's been sitting out here, but it's, uh, you know, it's in contact all the way down here, but on this end, it was lifted way up in the air. It wasn't sitting on anything or anything like that, but that's leaving this top slab with a tapered thickness. So it starts out at three inches thick down there and it comes down to like three and three quarter down here. So just to kind of clean things up, I'm gonna do a little skim pass, which is, usually kind of hard with a bandsaw because the blade kind of wants to be supported on both sides of the cut. But I'm running this uh, carbide tip blade so it has actual teeth versus little hooks that just kind of scrape the wood so I might have a better chance of actually getting into a, a tapered cut as I come across here. So I'm just going to set the blade to be kind of flushed with that end and then uh, make a cut. <laughs> Probably be a pretty slow as they get into it, but once that blade gets kind of into the wood and has a, um, I guess a, a piece of waste on top of it, it should track perfectly normally, I guess. But we'll take a look at the entrance point once, uh, once they get this cut off of here. So that actually went really smoothly. And you can see like where the, where this blade took out the wander from the other blade. Looks like it actually did pretty well. I got, well, uh, it's got a bit of a dip here where it kind of got back into the wood. So as it was unsupported on both sides of the cut, the blade rose a bit and then it got into all the wood and then it kind of righted itself out again. So it's a little low here as it's trying to kind of reestablish its course as it gets through being supported versus unsupported. You can see the same thing going on over here. So that's what it is, I guess. Past this point though, the blade is supported on both top and bottom. So it's uh, perfectly flat to the rest of the cut. So that's the uh, one thing about bandsaws is they have to have something on top and bottom to be cutting, you know, somewhat symmetrically. 
so they track straight. But this stuff looks pretty darn good. <laughs> it's that's pretty. Like just for slabs, ain't bad. So for this stuff, I'm thinking I'm gonna cut this at uh, six quarter. I cut a lot of four quarter already. That's some six quarter there. So I think I'm gonna keep going with the six quarter. That'll get me through these a little quicker because you know, it's fewer cuts. So I can use my lumber scale here. This is actually a four quarter scale, but if I go uh, the one and a half increments, that gives me pretty close to six quarter. It ends up being a cut thickness of just a hair over an inch and five eighths, which is uh, perfectly fine for me. So. Yeah, there's gonna be a few cuts here, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of boards at the end of these. Because these chunks, I mean, they're not small. They're pretty good chunks of wood still. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff in here still. So let's get to uh, let's get slicing. So what a difference a few days can make. Where are we at, November in Minnesota? Got a little bit of snow in the last few days. So uh, I think what we're gonna do next to kind of wrap things up is we're gonna take a quick look at the uh, slabs I cut that are back there. We'll take a look at a few of these guys in here. And I'm just going to basically just fork these things onto the trailer and bring them over to the new place to be stacked whenever. Normally you wouldn't wanna leave like cut stuff together like this because they're gonna mold and uh, they'll have like fungus growing between them. But uh, you can get away with a lot of things when it's, you know, freezing outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna dig uh, those guys out of the snow and we'll take a look at a few of these, get these things out of the way and we'll wrap up this video. All right, let's see what we got here. This looks pretty, uh, pretty spalted. Just wash my forks. So yeah, not super great for a workbench because it's a little bit, uh, you know, punky in a few spots, but man, that is some nice looking slabs though. You know, not so much a bench top, but uh, maybe a countertop or a table or something. Here's uh, this guy here, which is a book match, of course. Pretty cool little knot thing there. At least the waste from this project is, uh, I don't know, beautiful too. Here's some nice ball thing up here. Uh, 
All right, let's go down uh, uh, two boards and see what's down here. Ooh. Oh, weird. What's this? This is something new. Never seen one of these before. <laughs> Getting lazy. See, this is nowhere near as fun as using a bucket. Nowhere near. So this one has this large bark inclusion through here, which is kind of splitting, but it's got this uh, fantastic kind of figuring and swirly patterns around there. And we've got a little bit of spalting down here, but this stuff you know, has been sitting around for long enough, so it's got that kind of red-orange stain discoloration kind of thing going on, which is, I think, nicer than just boring old white stuff. Over here, we got some uh, some critter holes. <laughs> we got some bugs in this guy, because this is all pretty punky and mushy. But look at the color and grain down here. This is nice. So like with these boards, they're six quarters, so they could be uh, edged and glued up into you know three or four board tabletops pretty easily, or countertops, like a pair of them, or the top of a sideboard, or whatever. And that's just the first pair of them. All right, let's see what we got here. This stuff looks pretty ridiculously awesome. Like, heads up, awesomeness ahead. These uh, outside ones here are like, Super wide too. They're about uh, oh, they gotta be like 16 inches wide. So yeah, take a look at the color in this stuff. We're getting a little bit of uh, figure here from this crotch area. You can see some more of it on that one there. Not a whole lot of spalting in these ones. Just kind of like a sprinkling of spalt here and there. The uh, the narrow ones have a little more spalt going on. But these guys would make a pretty awesome. Uh, like book matched either river table, or if you edge it and have a book matched, uh, I don't know, 30 inch wide something. So this one's got a little bit of spalting, a little more boring. You got the colors and stuff, but I mean, sitting next to these guys, that stuff is uh, no comparison. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful stuff. Pretty good for waste. So I think it's gonna do it for this one. Made some pretty good progress on uh, getting this batch of workbenches ready to go. Next time we will finish up everything for this batch and get them ready to ship. So that should be super nice. So we got uh, this giant guy over here to cut up into two bench tops. And we got that other half of a log to cut into what one top at least. And then we have the quarters from this bigger log to process. So it should be, well, I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say it'd be pretty quick, but uh, I have no idea. Also, I gotta cut up all the leg stock out of this stuff. So still things to do, probably like a good solid day at the sawmill still to go, but uh, we're getting towards the end of this batch. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the workbench kits, anything on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd also be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> Half woodworking. <laughs> Woo, that's a lot of wood. <laughs>